Today's video is all about railing. We're going to start from nothing, get our rail posts installed, get our top rail, our bottom rail, and our ballasters all installed. Or spindles, whatever you may want to call them. Guys, keep in mind that my videos are full tutorials. When you're done watching this video, you will be able to build your own railing, build your own deck, install your own ledger board. Um, I'm going to give you the tips and pointers that you need to do so. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. I don't say this very often guys, but hit that subscribe button for me. If you're getting any value from these videos at all, you're enjoying what you see or it's helping you out, leave some comments and let me know what you're thinking. Let me show you what we got going on. I was hopeful guys I could get the railing video in one part, but it's just going to be too long. So I'm going to break it into two parts. This is part one. So here's where I'm at. Not all of my treads on my stairs are attached. I wanted to leave some of them loose until I got the bridging in and I got the bottom of the stairs secured. They are, I used two half inch concrete anchor bolts and secured my stairs to the slab that they're sitting on. That is frost depth. My stairs will not move. I've put a brace between this railing post and that deck support post and I've also done the same thing up there with a 4x4. So now I'm ready to get my rails on here. So I just wanted to speak a little bit about these rails. So when I cut these, the height determination is a little bit different than those up there because those are at the back side of the step and these are at the front side of the step so their height is a little bit different so what I did was just pull the string down from up there until it rested across the top of that angle and I pulled it down made me a little line right here you can kind of see it right there and determined the angle of this where it needs to be not necessarily the angle but the height at the location of this post so now I'm able to run these strings and these strings will help me determine the height of the four additional posts that I'm going to put in so now I'm going to show you a little quick tip on how to determine this angle without involving any math whatsoever so this is your angle right here in accordance with everything else that's going on that's the angle that your railing will be on so all you need to do is take a piece of scrap 4x4 line it up with your riser scribe a line at the bottom and cut it off that is now the angle of your railing saves you a lot of time and a lot of aggravation and makes the math easy now I want to mount my railing post to the front side of the stringer right here because that is the deepest part of the stringer and will allow me to, to secure it the best so and my string up here is going to determine my height so I am going to get some post um, cut the angle cut on them and then I'll mark the bottom angle and we'll get them installed I have the top angle cut on this post and I've got it clamped into place and I'm ready to cut the bottom I'm going to use this post as my template to cut the other three so all I need to do now is just come down here scribe a line and then I'm going to cut that bottom angle cut three more of those posts and then we'll get them installed I have my four posts cut and ready to be installed I'd love to set up a tripod and show all of that exactly but the wind is so bad it's just knocking everything over so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use two structural screws one up here and one here two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom to hold this in place and two screws will hold it just fine they will be the 3 8 the equivalent of a 3 8 lag bolt structural screws the wind is still cranking it's a bad hair day 
30 mile an hour gust. I've got this railing post on. I'm going to show you what we've got. And I'm getting ready to cut my corner post. I think I found this spot right here where maybe the wind's not going to be so bad that we can actually record a little bit of this getting cut out. So I have all the posts installed and I went ahead and uh, got my steps all screwed in place and I put this isn't the permanent railing this is just temporary I put it on there to kind of help me hold things in place while I was clamping everything turned out really nice so I've got a couple nails to pull out but it looks really good so now I'm ready to get started on these deck posts I'm ready to start cutting these posts for the corners of the deck. I'm hopeful you can see my lines here. So I am going to cut one and three quarters of an inch off of each, each side all the way down the length and then I'll cut them to length afterwards as far as the bottom's concerned. This will leave the top at the length that I need. So I've got my saw set at one and three quarters and I'm going to make these two cuts right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little bit of a cut right there on that corner edge. Try and get where you can actually see this. That's what we've got at this point. Now I'm going to grab my multi-tool and I'm going to finish this up so that this piece comes out nice and clean.
have it. A nice clean cutout. I'm going to go ahead and get the other one done and then we're going to get the side post cut. I've got the side post laid out and I'm going to get it cut. And I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to get one and three quarters out on both sides and then this entire piece here will come out. I'll finish the cuts with the sawzall. So one and three quarters because that's half the thickness of the four by four. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have to put two posts on the corners or have a complicated corner post. If I just cut the small notch out of the corner post, I only need one. It'll run both directions, but then you have to cut the notches out of these to keep the alignment the same. Now I'll take the saws off and finish the cut. And there we have it. So I'm going to get the rest of these cut and then we'll get them installed. I have all my posts cut and ready and as you can see it's a little crappy outside. I try to plan my time here with good weather but that doesn't always happen. The radar said today or the weather um, app said today was supposed to be nice but it certainly isn't. It changed overnight to a little bit of a rainy day. Tomorrow is going to be beautiful so I'm going to get done what I can. I'm getting ready to start installing these posts and I just kind of threw together a little diagram and I, I have not made my measurement over here where the stairs are just yet but I just wanted to touch base on post placement so it needs to be six feet or less between the posts so when you're laying these out even though there's going to be five posts in total here what you're going to want to do to lay out your post is divide between the spaces so it would be this length the 22 foot 4 inches divided by 4 to give you that spacing on those posts and over here it's going to be 16 feet with a total of four posts but three spaces so you'd want to divide that by three to give your dimensions just make the math a little bit easier you don't have to struggle with your spacing. That's exactly how you do it. So I'm going to get a couple of these posts and uh, we're going to get them on. I've got this corner post just setting here in place. I'm going to put one structural screw in it right now and then I'm just going to check it for square. Not so much going to get the level and plumb it, just check it for square off of the surface of the deck. So let's get this one in. Right. 
So what I've discovered is, is that this decking board here on this very outside edge is slightly thicker than this one. So it's messing me up trying to square it off of this side because it's holding my square on a little bit of an angle, as you can see. But it's not going to affect me so much on this side. And it is not 100% perfect, but unfortunately there's just not a bunch I can do about it. It's about a quarter of an inch. Um, when you put the screws in it kind of pulls everything tight so it's not the end of the world that they're not perfect if I put the level on it it's plumb it's just not perfectly level to that decking board and if I put the level on it this way it's pretty much close to between the lines so I'm gonna get these other three screws I'm going to put four screws total in this post and get the other three screws in and then we're going to get the center post in place I've got this post set in place I measured between the end post and this post right here and divided that just by two 66 and three quarter for the center of this post what I'm going to do is put one screw from this side right through the center and then I'm going to put two screws from the back side top and bottom so um, I'm dodging some raindrops here I don't want my equipment to get wet I'm going to get this one screwed on and I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of these posts it's all basically the same just center them up on your measurements and get your structural screws in and then we're going to try and get started on some top cap and uh, get some of this railing built. I've got all my railing posts installed and I'm getting ready to start installing the top rail. I've got this 2x4 just setting here right now but I'm going to get a couple screws right here just to hold it in place so that I can get some good measurements for the next one. Now this overhang as I'm going to leave it like that it's just a way to control my waist so that I'm not throwing away a bunch of wood. There is a board going underneath here. So that'll seam that together very nicely. And that one, the board that's here will be the one that my balusters will mount to. So I am going to get a couple screws in here. Then we'll come back and we'll get that board installed. I've got this board cut and I just cut a 45 on it with my circular saw. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we have our butt joint here, which as you can see doesn't line up perfect. I didn't expect it to. I'll put a clamp on here and squeeze them together once I get it secured to the post. And then we're going to get this board installed and get this all squared up and taken care of before I move on to more top rail. Da -dee -da -dee -dee. La -dee -da -dee -da. I'm going to put two screws here and two screws there just to hold everything in place. And I'm also going to do the same on the other post, just a couple of screws. Make sure I'm lined up on my post good. forward to the sunshine tomorrow that's for sure now that they're screwed in place I want to get a measurement between these two and get this board cut it's going to be 59 and three quarters got this board cut clamped into place now I want to put a couple of toenails in through the edges of it right here and I've put some boards behind to hold it in place what happens when you toenail these it'll try to push the board back and I, I don't want it to push back I want it to stay right there so I've just taken these two little pieces of scrap two screws screwed them onto the post to hold this to hold this in place while I screw it and I did the same thing over here and as you can see this board looks like it's pretty good this one's pretty 
messed up, but I'll get them all pulled into place and uh, get them fastened down. The lumber is not really good right now, and the reason for that is the, the pandemic, of course. Um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, everybody ran out, bought up all the pressure-treated lumber that was currently in the stores or pretty close to all of it. So the lumber mills are rushing with limited staff to, to get this lumber out and get it to us. It's probably not getting treated quite as long as it normally would. There's a little bit less quality control, so some of the boards just aren't very good. And while I pre-ordered all this lumber, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I had an issue getting the entire order filled. So some of this I'm not super happy with, the quality, but it kind of is what it is. This is supposed to be number two prime or better, and in some cases, I don't think that it is. So anyway, let's get these screws in and get this sock together. I'm going to go ahead and put one right through the center here. Now that I've got that in place, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this one 2x4 into shape. I don't really need to squeeze it. I think I can just push it there. And I'm going to get a screw in here to secure it to this top. Just go ahead and put the clamp on and push this one in. I'll go ahead and run just a multiple, you know, six, five or six screws. Sock this all together. Now we have good alignment here, and we're well braced underneath. I'll take those temporary bracings out. I'll just use the same ones and keep moving them down. And then on the back side of this is where my balusters are going to be, and there will be another board down there four inches off of the duck boards I'd like to thank you for watching if you enjoyed yourself click on one of those two videos right there I'd like to give a special thanks to Tony Iconelli and Brett Wimmer because none of this could happen without them